Hi and welcome to part three of Crafting Immersion and this one is about the narrative or creating a narrative for a pinball experience. Now this is very important because pinball games have evolved over the years and they're more in line now with video games, with modern video games. So gone are the days are where you're flipping a steel ball around a table just hitting targets for points. Those, uh, those days are long gone. Modern pinball games try to tell a story to get the player involved in an experience, an immersive experience, which is what I've been doing for well over 10 years now. So this is um, another example. This game, which I've just about finished now, this is Total Recall, which has a narrative, a very clear narrative, and everything in the game feeds that narrative. Now, this isn't something new in pinball. Um, adding narratives to uh, pinball games, they started, I think it was High Speed was the first one, where the story of the game was that you were uh, running from the police and the police were chasing you. It was a very basic story, but that was the first time that a narrative was used in the pinball game. And then um, after that came the two big hitters from Brian Eddy, which was Medieval Madness, which was, again, a very basic narrative, but the narrative was that there's this evil king uh, that rules over this kingdom, and he has little kings that you have to beat before you get to the big king, and then everything in the game feeds that single narrative. And then Attack from Mars again, you know, you got aliens attacking the planet, and uh, and you have to beat them. And again, everything in the game feeds that single narrative. And that's why those two games, in particular, was so popular. Um, and were the top pinball games for a long time, because they had that narrative. And you had a bad guy to beat. You had a bad guy with uh, the King of Pain, and you had a bad guy with the aliens. And, uh, and that's important as well. When you have a pinball game, a modern pinball game, you, you've got to really have somebody to beat. That's very important. I've done this with all of my games. I always have a bad guy in there, whether it's Roy Batty in Blade Runner, the shark in Jaws, Ed 209 in, in Robocop. There's always a bad guy that you have to beat. And in this game, the bad guy is Cohagen, played by uh, Ronnie Cox, as well as his, um, his henchmen, uh, Richter or Richter so you know in this game you play the uh, the role of Quaid and uh, and you have to save Mars basically because uh, Cohagen is uh, unwilling to switch on the uh, the reactor that would give Mars a new atmosphere a breathable atmosphere instead he's um, limiting the oxygen supply and making a ton of money so the idea of this game is that you have to switch on the reactor and free Mars and also kill Cohagen in the process. So when you make it a pinball game and you sort of take the narrative from the film and make it into a pinball game, you have to make the pinball game much more exciting than the film. Now the film is very exciting but you have to condense all that excitement down into a single playable experience and you do that by breaking the game up into missions uh, and then for the more exciting missions you turn them into multiballs. I'll just show you here. So we've got five missions in this game and we've got four multiples and then we've got the insanely exciting wizard mode uh, which is uh, right at the end of the game. So everything feeds that single narrative. So all these little missions here all contribute to the main story which is at the end do you switch on the reactor or do you fail because you can fail. So the uh, the idea of the game is, uh, is to sort of take uh, the player through the events of the film but not in um, a chronological order. I did that before, I've done that with Star Wars, I did that with Aliens and I did that with Tron Legacy, but on this game it's a much better idea just to have things happen in a sort of a random order, but, uh, but there is a definite end to the game and it really comes down to this one moment, this game winning shot, like I did with Jaws, and if you make the shot you win the game, if you don't make the shot you lose the game and you have to restart. So everything about the game feeds that narrative and that's important so with this game it's nice that uh, you are playing a role in this you're not playing yourself because I don't know about you but when I play video games I don't want to play me because I'm a nobody I want to play a character and uh, and they don't do that in pinball games they always expect uh, they always expect it to be you playing the game but it's not you know you really want to be somebody you want to be a character that you're playing and on this occasion I am Arnold Schwarzenegger in fact when the game starts he says you are not you you're me which kind of reinforces that. And it's the same with aliens, you know, when you, you can be one of the Marines or even Ripley herself or Robocop, you can be Robocop. So I think that's important as well to sort of put the player 
in a role rather than just being themselves. So that's all part of the immersion. And so a story is very important to the immersive process. And how you sell that story is, is all to do with the script, the lighting, the audio design, the music. It all contributes to take the player on this incredible immersive journey. And while I'm here and I've got your attention, I'll just show you uh, the final artwork that I've produced for this game. So I added a few more inserts, uh, tidied up these little uh, jackpot things that uh, point in the uh, specific directions now. And um, so that's pretty much finished uh, on the artworks thing. I probably might add a couple more little bits and pieces, but uh, generally that is done. And the game is probably about 90% complete now. And this is an incredible game of pinball. Incredible. I mean, I'm making it up as I go along, but that's the best way to make a pinball game, in my opinion. You don't have anything planned. You just go for it. And everything sort of works out in the end. And every part of this game just works perfectly. Okay, so that's uh, Total Recall. Nearly complete. I'm going to move on to my next project, uh, which I'm very excited about. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Okay, toodaloo!